living fully alive in every way. You're listening to Relationship Prescriptions with Dr. Carol. How nourished is your soul? Hi there, I'm Dr. Carol and welcome to Relationship Prescriptions. This is part two of a two-part series on taking in life. If you have not listened to part one, I'd encourage you to go back and listen to that now. We are unpacking the principle that you and I need to learn to feed ourselves. God makes an infinite variety of nourishment available for every dimension of our lives, but He doesn't douse us with the nourishment we need. We are responsible for knowing when we're hungry, for choosing, finding, preparing, and taking into our being the kinds of nourishment we need. The nourishment that God makes available is wonderful. Sometimes we can get uh, all caught up in things that drain us, and we need to pause and intentionally see, where do I need to get filled up? Where do I need to take in life? Where do I need to find nourishment and take it into my being? Now, God created us as integrated, whole, beautiful human beings. And we talked in part one of this series about choosing appropriate physical nourishment, caring for our bodies. We also talked about taking in emotional, mental nourishment caring for our our minds and our emotions, such an important part. I know I hear from people all the time who are struggling with things like depression and anxiety, feeling overwhelmed, feeling stressed, and taking in that mental emotional nourishment is so important. So if you did not hear that part one episode, do go back and listen to that. Today, I'd like to talk about relational nourishment and spiritual nourishment, both incredibly important. As far as our relationships, God created you and me with the need, desire, and capacity for intimacy. The people around us become incredibly important in our well-being. Yes, you do need to help others. Uh, Love is something that does need to flow from you to others. That's a topic for another day. What I want to talk about is the people fuel that you need, taking in the kind of life you get from other people. God did not design us to live and grow and thrive in isolation. He designed us to grow and thrive in community. That is not always something that I have particularly done well with. I grew up as an unhappy and quite isolated, introverted young woman. I remember when I was going through you know, college and medical school, all, all that training, I was doing well intellectually and academically, but I, I felt so lonely and so isolated. Even after being in a crowd, I would, I would go home and feel lonely. That was not the fault of other people. Yes, we do uh, need to intentionally see other people that are in trouble and reach out to help them. That's important. But I'm talking about the responsibility that we have to be intentional about the people we connect with. There are many different kinds of people. There are people who are toxic, who drain you, who are prickly, Uh, people that deplete you just by being in their presence. There are people who fuel you, people who lift you up, people that make you want to be the best version of yourselves, that bring you hope and joy just by being around them. Pause and imagine the kind of people that you have in your life. Are you getting the appropriate people fuel that you need to thrive? Now, some of the things that I have had to intentionally learn to do 
One is eliminate toxic people. There are people who actually rejoice when you are hurt. That is an absolute characteristic of someone who's toxic. There are people who seek to micromanipulate. If you are experiencing destructive relationships, if you are controlled and manipulated and are down after being in somebody's presence, it could be that they are toxic. And in that case, when possible, you do need to eliminate toxic people from your life. Jesus did not invest the same amount of time and energy with everyone. Yes, he loved everybody the same, but there were people he walked away from. Gary Thomas's book, just published a few months ago, uh, When to Walk Away, very powerful. We had him on the podcast a, uh, a number of weeks ago, and we'll put the link to that podcast in the show notes for this one as well, in case you didn't listen to that one. A powerful principle of how Jesus dealt with people who were toxic in his life. So I had to learn that there were times I had to walk away. That should not be a frequent thing in your life. We're not talking about people that are just unhappy or that make you uncomfortable. These are people who are destructive. And I can think of two or three people in my life that I have had to walk away from. As far as the intentional people fuel, relational nourishment, I have had to intentionally connect with uh, people in my life to fuel me. I don't do that naturally. It has taken a, a lot of my emotional energy, frankly. After my husband passed away, this was one of the hardest things that I had to do, to deeply connect with others at church and in other ways, it would have been so much easier to just kind of uh, curl up and, and, and isolate. It took a lot of energy to reach out and connect, but that became so important. There are a couple friends I have who I know the ups and downs of their lives, and they know the ups and downs of my life. There are these two or three people that if something is going on at 1130 at night and I just need somebody, I can reach out and call them and they can do the same to me. We respect each other's time, but there are occasions when all of us face stuff in life and we need people. And I have had to learn that it's okay that God put people in our lives to give that kind of support. I have also learned that there are times professional help is needed. I have at various times in my life and growth, including after when my husband passed away, reached out to professionals to give insight, perspective, support to help me through the times when I felt emotionally overwhelmed. I want to say something about marriage. If you are married, your spouse, God designed to be a really important part of the, the people fuel, the relational nourishment that you get. And then you should be the same to them. God designed that to be mutual. But even in a healthy marriage, your spouse is not all the people fuel that you need. Marriage can drain you if that is the only source of your relational fuel. It is important to invest in your marriage and please do that. But don't only go to your spouse. That was not God's intention. No one human being can be enough, can satisfy all your needs, can understand everything about you. So even if you are married, reach beyond that. Uh, pray about it. Find a couple people that you invite into your life in a way that can nourish you. So here's my challenge for you about the relational nourishment in your life. Is there one or more people in your life who is toxic, 
who is destructive, who delights in your pain, or is micromanipulating? If so, if they can be eliminated from your life, that may be a terribly difficult thing to do, but very, very important. If you cannot eliminate them from your life, then limit your contact with them. Jesus did that. You can too, even though it's hard. And then part two, who is close to you in your life? Who knows you well enough that can ask hard questions if you are walking away from God or in a way that is displeasing to God? Who can you reach out and grab a hold of if you need some support? John Townsend speaks of, at times, we all fall into a well. We all fall into a pit. And we need somebody to help us in those circumstances. That kind of help does not come from somebody at the, at, at the top of the well looking down and shouting, hey, get, get yourself together. Climb on out of there. What you and I need when we are in trouble is somebody who will jump down in the well with us, be there next to us, and help show us the steps to climb out. In those times, we very well may not see the steps to take ourselves and need somebody present right next to us to help show those steps forward. So who is in your well with you? Who can you reach out to for support? If you don't have someone, pray about that and do the hard work to reach out and connect to someone. That may be hard. It was for me. But it is important to find that kind of nourishment, the people fuel that God built you to have. And now thinking of taking in life spiritually, the kind of spiritual nourishment that you and I need. This, of course, addresses the core of who you are, your relationship to God, matters of the heart, matters of eternity. However good or bad this life is, remember, it is just a fraction of our existence when it comes to eternity. As important as our well-being is here, our well-being for eternity is so much more important. And that is a huge part of what we're addressing when we talk about taking in life spiritually. I pray that if you are listening to this podcast, you have said yes to Jesus. And you can celebrate that where you will spend eternity is settled. But we need spiritual nourishment in an ongoing way. You and I are leaky. Our hearts are leaky. We connect with things in our world that are uh, contaminating or draining or distracting. Our hearts lose perspective. Our hearts lose the, the spiritual vitality easily. And it's important that we regularly get filled up again spiritually. I believe that rhythms are important here. I do that daily weekly, and on an intermittent basis. In my daily time with God, this is just, it, it, it's become part of my life every morning. I haven't, during all seasons of my life, done this as consistently, but I know I cannot make it without connecting with God first thing in the day. I spend an hour with him, and that has taken effort on my part to make that a consistent part of my daily practice. I do read some of some scripture during that time, and then I will just I, I will just sit there and talk to Jesus about what's going on in my life, about what may be coming up that day, about what I may be wrestling with, about questions rolling around in my mind repeatedly, so frequently. There are ideas or a, a sense from God or, or something that is clear to me at that time that makes a difference for my day. I have learned in my time with God in the morning to turn things over to him. I, I can't manage everything on my own. 
and I have turned over to God my time, my money, my influence, and anything else that's troubling me. Giving God permission to be in control of those areas of my life takes, takes a lot of the pressure off. And it is amazing what God will do when you let him have control over certain areas of your life. Along with that, it's very frequent that there will come ideas or steps that I need to take in one of these areas. This is not just sitting back passively and waiting for God to fix things. It's putting him in the driver's seat and then asking him, what do I need to do about this? What step do you want me to take? Sometimes things get confusing. And I have learned in those times that asking Jesus for perspective makes so much difference. I have learned to pray, Jesus, what's going on here? What, what is, what's happening here? That will often bring some clarity. Sometimes there's some actions I need to take. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is working in my heart and showing me a place where he needs to change me. Sometimes there's some actions I need to take. Sometimes it's a matter of spiritual warfare. And asking Jesus that question will give my heart the perspective where I know where to plead the blood of Jesus, where to speak the name of Jesus and cancel the enemy's plans. Jesus, what's going on here? I have learned how important a weekly Sabbath is. Now, the, the word Sabbath actually means pause. This is not primarily a, uh, oh, a, a reward for having worked hard all week or fulfilling a duty that God mandates. It is pausing from doing our own thing, from producing, from making our own way in the world, stepping back and taking in God's refreshment, of pausing in our production and delighting, finding joy, uh, relishing God's presence, connecting with the people in our world who are also uh, growing and, and spending time with God, connecting with others in the body of Christ. The weekly Sabbath has been something I have returned to in uh, recent years because of how big a difference it has made in my life, not as a religious thing, but as a way to celebrate, to refresh, to take in God's life in a new way. I pray that you are taking in life spiritually, both on a daily, a weekly, and then a periodic basis. Periodically, that might look like uh, some of your vacations being a spiritual retreat, going to a conference, uh, particular times during life when you need God's intensive intervention and step away from some of your other responsibilities for a few days a week or longer and intensively work with God on things in your own soul, periodically as needed. These aspects of taking in life will change how you function. They will change your energy level, your perspective, your ability to give to others. When it comes to your spiritual life, here's the challenge question. How are you nourishing your spiritual center, the core of who you are that relates to God? What are you doing to intentionally take in spiritual life, primarily from God himself, on a regular basis? Now, in thinking about taking in life in these areas, these lifestyle practices, it can... The, there, uh, there's a danger here in that this can just devolve into a list of things to do. If all you have heard in these two podcast episodes is just a list of more things to do, then uh, that's sad. Then I really haven't done a very good job. 
I pray that you see this as a, a banquet of nourishment, a banquet of different nutrients, just like our physical body needs a variety, you know, protein, carbohydrates, fats, vitamins, minerals, water, our souls, our being needs a variety of nutrients as well. Yes, taking care of our physical bodies, taking care of our minds and emotions, healthy input there, uh, enjoying beauty, uh, wisdom, you know, books, podcasts, healthy media, things for our mind, relationally paying attention to the people that lift us up and investing in those relationships, and then intentionally connecting with God on a daily, weekly, and periodic basis to get that nourishment for the deepest part of your being, your spirit, your inner life. This is not about feeling overwhelmed or guilty. It's about rejoicing and taking in good, healthy nourishment for all the dimensions of life that God provides and that you and I need. I pray that that's the perspective in which you are seeing these matters. We are talking a lot more about these and related things in our online community. And I want to invite you uh, to check that out fullyalivegroup.com. There on that page, you can request some sample resources of the full-length video sessions, the downloadable tip sheets, some more information about all that happens inside our online community in the Fully Alive group. And I would love to help make some of those resources available for you. So I would love you to check that out, fullyalivegroup.com. I want to thank you again for being part of our podcast family. If you have a question or a comment, a perhaps idea for an upcoming podcast episode, feel free to reach out to me at drcarolministries.com, the contact us page there and leave your thoughts. Thank you again. And until next time, may God bless you. Thank you for listening to Relationship Prescriptions with Dr. Carol. Our purpose is to provide trustworthy resources that help you and others live fully alive in every way as God intended. If you would like to help others experience transformation in their lives and relationships, we invite you to partner with us. Text the word GIVE, that's G-I-V-E, to the number 512-980-1620 or visit our website at drcarolministries.com forward slash donate to make a one-time contribution or monthly gift. Your financial support allows us to expand our message and to help others. Thank you so much and may God bless you.